Hey everybody, welcome to Black Arrow Gaming. I'm Bob and this is the 47th episode in my fourth Age of Wonders 3 Advanced Strategy series. Most of the comments for this episode come from Jeff. I'm going to run through those all here real quick. Got one from Arvid Nelson too. Let's start with Jeff's comments. Um, a lot of reminders for using Embrace Darkness as I should be. Uh, this elf city is producing Griffin Riders. There's no reason I should not have Embrace Darkness cast on that city, give them all lifesteal. Unfortunately, I do not have enough casting points left to do that on this turn. Now, I'm not going to cancel this Griffin's production um, because I would waste some time having done that um, and I think some money too. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let that first griffin finish. I'm just going to have to deal with one without lifesteal. But I'm going to start casting Embrace Darkness now so that I can uh, so that I can have access to those with lifesteal um, as soon as possible. Jeff also had an interesting comment about uh, how to deal with a large group of enemy ships. I had seen one somewhere. I actually don't remember where that was. But I know I saw a big group, or a decent sized group of enemy ships somewhere. Uh, he suggested uh, sending in a bunch of spy drones, or a spy drone, and then uh, casting destabilized mana core. Which is a great idea, especially because boats have fire weakness and can't heal under normal circumstances without going back to sit in a harbor. I don't even know that the computer is smart enough to do that. Um, but uh, the only potential problem is that a spy drone could get shot if the boats charge it. They might kill it with cannons or whatever they have before the stabilized mana core has a chance to trigger. I actually wanted to look at that on camera here because I in wasn't entirely certain about that. Because it's not a spell that I use very often. I mean, De Dreadnought's a class I barely ever re even play, so I don't really know um, how all the mechanics work. But I'm pretty sure there's like a countdown. Yeah, the mana core will detonate within two, so two combat rounds dealing 60 damage to all units on the battlefield. Okay, so yeah, two, two combat rounds. If you can keep your drone alive for that long, that would be a pretty great idea. I thought it was an interesting one, at least worth mentioning. Um, let's see, there was a couple other things. Uh, Jeff said I should consider terraforming some stuff uh, to try to make these cities. Uh, make sure all my cities are cheerful if possible. And he also said that I should check the tribute status with the dwarf and dragon vassals to see if there's anything I can get out of them. Um, he said that uh, with regard to the dragons anyway, I should probably see... Where where are they anyway? I seem to have lost my dragons. They're way over here, that's right. Um, the dragons I would probably like to try to get... Um, they're at, what, 300? Demanding tribute will... Minus 500. That's going to significantly lower their morale. I don't know if I really want to do that because the city's generating some gold and I'd probably just get some wyverns. I'd rather, I think I'd rather have the gold income from a respectful city than. I'll have to think about that. You guys can let me know what you think, but I think I'm just going to leave the dragon city alone. But the dwarf city, if its morale's back up to super obscenely high, there's really no reason why I shouldn't be. Demanding stuff from them. Uh, I've got one turn left since I demanded tribute from the dwarves, so or uh, until I can do it again without uh, morale dipping below uh, cheerful. So I'm gonna let the dwarves kind of do their thing for one more turn. I'll try to remember to do that on the next turn. Um, with regard to terraforming, I should probably do that before I forget. Um, I did want to point out that this city right here, Lunaris, is super super close to being cheerful. Um, it's a happy 598. I should definitely boost that up. In fact, I'm going to abort that spell while I terraform some stuff. Nice thing about terraforming is it doesn't cost any uh, magic or uh, casting points. So I'm going to like probably get rid of some of these wetlands here. Fill that in. Um, that really should, I mean, that really should do it. I'm going to get a little bit extra because I have the mana to spare. There might be situations where, I mean, I want to leave some of the roadways open or the pathways because if my dreadnoughts come through here, they're just going to cut stuff down anyway. Um, fill in that little spot right there. That should be more than enough to get that elf city up to cheerful. And there may be other cities too. It's just something I need to kind of remember. I think draconians like barons, um, if I'm not mistaken, liked terrain. 
Uh, I might have to look this up, because I didn't think it said specifically what terrain. I'm pretty sure it's barons. Draconians as a race. They like barons and lava. So... The city is currently happy 264, so it should... It could use a lot of barons. So I'm gonna sow salt pretty much everywhere in the city's borders. And a lot of this is already barrens, but I could get rid of some of these trees. Now I do intend on using the city to make earth elementals, and that was something else Jeff suggested was remembering to cast um, remembering to cast Embrace Darkness on this city as well before summoning any of them. I guess it's easy to tell where the Fertile Plains are because they build those little houses on them. So this should make a pretty significant difference to this city's morale. I wonder why I can't... Oh wait, I'm already uh, terraforming that one. Get these spots up here. There's just a lot in this city. Okay, and I've still got 824 mana left. I think I got all of them. Yeah, that should be it. So that should significantly improve the morale of that city. And there's sure I'm sure there's others, so I'll kind of try to remember to keep an eye on that as I'm moving around doing stuff. If the city's already at Cheerful, I'm probably not going to worry about it, but it's worth keeping an eye on. A uh, last comment for this episode comes from Arvid Nelson, who mentioned that I might want to consider hurrying production of some uh, some of my cities. This is something I an idea I've been kicking around for a little while, and I think now is a good enough time to implement it. Uh, particularly the two I want to look at, and it's easier to see in the overview panel here, is uh, Eterus and Tersenex. Ter 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 I, I don't know how to say that word. Um, uh, it's the uh, these two grand palaces that have three turns left. Probably worth hurrying productions on those. It's also probably worth hurrying production if I come to a city that needs a master's guild, something like that. Um, basically, I just want to kind of move the process along, and I have the gold to do it. This dwarf city is cheerful, so I can hurry production here without any real long-term penalties and get that grand palace faster. And uh, down here, I can do the same because this city also is cheerful. And so that'll give me two grand palaces. Actually, I'm getting three on the next turn because I have another one uh, in, in in Sham down here that's going to be finishing up too. So a lot of uh, my casting points are going to jump by 30 next turn, so that's pretty cool. Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's get back to it here. I've got plenty to keep me busy now. I am currently in the process of trying to level the snake up, and if I remember correctly, that's veteran, um, and it needs to go expert. Okay, so my idea was to get the snake to level up a little bit more as a tier one, and then get the promotions for it uh, in the column of champions, I believe what the idea was here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get started by going after this structure here. Uh, since there could be items on it, I'll send the hero. And I just, I gotta be careful with the snake. The problem with the trick with leveling him up on these low levels like this is just that... I mean, it wouldn't take too much for those two sphinxes, for example, to just nuke him with sun disk. So, I gotta be extra cautious with him. Alright, I... Would like to trick those sphinxes into coming in a bit closer before doing much. I'm going to get the snake kind of out of the way for this first phase, because I don't want him to run in with range attacks and just wreck stuff. Naga can sit up front, and there's no reason why he shouldn't cast Thunderstorm. Uh oh, they can all gang up on the sorcerer. Nope, can't quite all reach him. Okay, so I want these guys to go away. Thinking about having the snake do that, I want the I want the sorcerer to try to stun something. You know, I think I'm just gonna let the knights do this. Okay. 
Uh, I probably should have let the snake do that because it would have hit back and I gotten some XP from that. That's okay. Um, I'm gonna see who I can stun here. 42% chance to stun either Sphinx. See, the Nagar Matriarchs aren't, like, super powerful melee units, per se. So I should probably be a little cautious here. I don't want to get overconfident, do something stupid, and lose something. Cosphere does not have a great chance to work on that Sabertooth Chariot, but I think I'm about to give it a try anyway. Let's first see if I can stun one of those mammoths. Okay, that... Worked out nicely, first try. I'm gonna move one Naga here and just put her on defense. Let's see what that guy does. This one I'm probably gonna engage that chariot with. Forgot my Nagas have lifesteal too, so that kind of helps going on the offensive like that. I might, and on that note, I'm probably gonna go ahead and have her attack that Sphinx. Okay, I'm gonna get the snake a little closer and see what he can get. I should be able to pick off something there. We'll see what the Sphinx does, but I got a feeling I'm going to leave it with low enough health that the Snake might actually be able to get something. I just need to make sure the Snake doesn't get ganged up on by a couple of units. On that note, might be able to daze one of them. No, I didn't really want to critical hit that guy, but that's okay. Should be okay here. I keep forgetting about Thunderstorm. That's part of the reason why I'm not getting XP on this snake. Oh, I panicked my knock. Okay, that actually kind of works out for me. I need to try to end this battle on this turn now. But, uh, should be okay. Get out of here. Okay, with a flank attack, I bet the snake could kill that Sphinx. Would bestow Iron Heart remove the panicked? Nope. Didn't think so. Do I have break control or anything like that? I'd love to make this last a little longer so the snake could kill two of those uh, sphinxes instead of just one. But I don't think he has anything that can really help in this situation. Yep. Alright, well, that's okay. We'll, uh... Have to get creative here. I could move this guy here. I'm trying to think if there's a way that I could use up that guy's movement. But no, I need to end this battle on this turn. All right, well, why don't you hit that Sphinx? Don't critical hit. Oh my gosh, okay. I could still get this one. I have a pretty good chance to get it. Um, but no guarantees. You know, even if I don't, the snake should still be able to handle one hit from that thing, I would think. Yeah, it'll be all right. Okay, that actually might give me more XP in the long run, because... But that guy's gonna run away now. Ah, dang it. I have to decide whether I want to sit around for a turn, or... Which I don't. I should have just hit it from the front and let the snake take the hit there. No way, as far as I know, that I could... I 
could steal enchantment. <laughs> I guess I could try to dis... Maybe I could dispel it? I don't know if you can dispel a panicked effect. I'm out of casting points anyway. Okay, I'm just playing out of options here. I'm, I'm a little irritated that I keep putting myself in situations where I, I, I'm too careful with the snake and then it gets no XP. Um, neither of those are really worth keeping. All right, let's go get an orc city. I'll get this stupid thing leveled up eventually. All right, I know what you need to be doing. You need to cast Thunderstorm. You need to go here and heal him try to remember that I have Thunderstorm active and plan accordingly with regard to getting the snake experience. Uh, let's open up with some curses. Ah, oh, alright. Cool. Successful in the first try. And probably the Great Sword. behind their walls is not going to be particularly useful for them. I wouldn't mind charming some of these orcs, but I might just kill them for snake XP anyway. We'll see. Let's see what happens. keep throwing stuff at my naga, that's fine. Let's stun this guy. And we'll charge this guy with the knight. We'll move the snakes up, leave them just out of range of the greatsword, but close enough to where they could do or actually I could even guard them I don't really think they're actually really even under any threat from the greatsword they'd be fine there because if the greatsword runs down even with war cry he's not going to do much okay and we're going to try to cause fear on you for hopes that you run away and give me some XP later Just gonna kill that one. And maybe cause fear on that other guy if he comes over this direction. No, you went after the wrong unit. Dang it. Okay. Alright. At this point, I think I can just move away and soak up this guy's. Yeah, I could just soak up this guy's movement. They'll heal. It will be okay. Oops. Well, that didn't work. Alright, I just need to... That guy will come back. I'll let the snake get him. I need just a little bit more to rank up this battle. I need to make sure that snake gets something else here. I can't get rid of that last movement of his. He's gonna, he's gonna kill himself running away from the. Well, maybe he can't move. Yeah, he can't actually move because. He doesn't have any action points left. He, I mean, he doesn't have any movement points left. And he's panicked, so he won't attack either. So actually, he should still be alive on the next turn. All right, well, that's interesting. OK. 
Okay. Now I'm gonna intentionally let him run. Or just back everything else off and let the snake kind of handle the rest here. We'll give him a touch by faith. And hopefully if that uh, effect wears off, he'll go after the snake and not one of the naga. Nope, he's still in panic mode. Alright, cool. He's also already used war cries, so that's also good for me. Alright, dude. Over here. I don't suppose I have any other healing abilities on this guy. He kind of needs some sort of healing. Be useful. Maybe another one of those potions that I made. Uh-oh. Yeah, they tried to get the snake, but they're not going to. Alright, if that orc crits for some reason, that would be bad. I'm gonna soften it up just enough with these guys. I'm gonna only shoot it once. Alright, that one. Gives the snake a flank attack, so guaranteed a kill there. May want to heal that snake. Probably should use... Oh, he doesn't have harmonizing energy either. Yeah, that's right. I never got it on him. I think he leveled up, so I can probably give that to him. I think I forgot to level one up in between the battles. Okay. Well, I'll heal the snake at the beginning of the next battle. Okay, so we got some orcs. I think I'm just going to absorb that city. I don't have a whole lot of orf orc tech. Could give him sorcery nine, or uh, that's not a nine. <laughs> sorcery six, but I'm thinking harmonizing energy is probably the way to go here. It's come in a little too... It seems like it would be a little... Coming in a little handy. A little too handy to pass up. I mean, I could just get him a healing potion, but that, that'll take a little while. Harmonizing energy will benefit me now. And it'll help with some of these smaller battles where I don't need Chaos Rift. So I think I am going to grab that. Okay. Speaking of items... Let's see how they're doing. Uh, I believe that's the city over here is producing that one for the king. And this city here is upgrading to Grand Palace. Um, that temple I'm going to put on hold for a minute because I want another healing item for the sorcerer. Uh, we're going to go with... Because why not? That's going to confuse me in his inventory, but I don't care. <laughs> um, Alright. Who's next? Probably those guys. They should be actually fairly safe for the snake to fight, too. Not entirely safe, though. He can still be stunned. Maybe I should go after those humans first. Also, wouldn't mind charming some knights. As though I don't have enough already. Um, I'm gonna go after the wisps first, I think. The snake is should be pretty close. 53 out of 70. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go with this one first, and, and here's why. The snake... When he becomes a mature shock serpent, we'll have a hundred percent stun immunity or shock immunity, which means those things will not be able to stun it. And this battle will actually give it a useful opportunity to get a whole bunch of XP because it could probably one on one almost all of those things. So I need to try to level it up here. Okay, good. They put them smart and put it in the back. All right, the first thing I want to do is cast Bestow Iron Heart on that thing to give it a little extra defense, just in case. 
And second, I will probably go ahead and just cast Harmonizing Energy on it now, rather than waiting. I could even give it Spear of Protection here and get a lot of XP really easily. I didn't really think about doing that, but that's not a bad idea. Yeah, I'm just going to cast that now, because I'll probably need the Sorcerer to stun stuff later on. Okay, um, I'll wait so I can cast Thunderstorm. How to get their attention. So what I want to do here is, is a, idea is slow those guys down, or actually succeed in cursing them, one or the other. Okay, actually succeeded in cursing it, okay. I cursed both of them, I actually was not intending to do that. Okay, 42% chance to stun that one. I'm going to need to probably charge that guy. Alright, here's the plan. Get the snake behind the sorcerer. The sorcerer could take... Ooh, that's a lot of damage that that thing would dish out. Especially if by some odd chance... I don't know how well I can protect it, though. I got that Naga, but I've already moved her. Okay, I'm gonna kind of count on this working here. If it doesn't, then I'm gonna have to put the priest in harm's way. It didn't. 42% chance three times in a row. I got no stun. Okay, this makes me a little nervous, because now both of these guys can charge. Well, he's at least gotten slowed down a bit for some reason. I don't know for sure why. But he can't move as far. The problem is that he can still move far enough to reach the sorcerer. And if he hits the sorcerer and this guy hits the sorcerer, the sorcerer could die. So maybe I need to try to daze one of them. No, I can't get any of that to trigger in my favor. Now the priest could take some punishment, because I didn't move him properly before that. I'm going to have to block that knight with this one, so at least the sorcerer doesn't take hits from multiple enemies. And the snake is probably going to be okay. The knights could fumble too. Two of them are cursed, so there's that. I'm going to just defend as things currently are. I'm a little worried about that priest there. But I dare not move anything further forward, so... Okay, they were dumb. They could have brought that unit down and hit the priest from a different angle with the cavalry and possibly killed it. Okay, I may have lucked out there a little bit. That's what you get when you count on those percentage chances. Stuff... It's like when it can go wrong, it probably will. Alright. Sorcerer is unscathed. So I get another round of chances to stun something. I think I'm going to use it on this guy. He seems to be threatening probably the most... Well, I don't know. The Naga might... Naga could probably kill that knight, and I think I'm going to give that a shot. Okay. Alright, actually what I'm going to do then... No, he'd kill that one. Yeah, he'd really kill that one. I just need to stun one of these guys. Alright, I'm 
gonna try this. Move the snake up to block this a little bit. 54% chance to stun. Should be able to... Okay, I landed that at least. Now the snake gets a kill on that knight. Which is not enough to level him up. I have to get a... Oh, he's close though. He's really close. Um, I want the naga to get rid of that cavalry. I'll get the kill with a different... On a different unit. And you just need to make sure that knight does not move. Oh, you definitely made sure he doesn't move. Okay. Okay. Should be alright. Hopefully the lightning bolts don't murder everybody. I need at least one more thing for the snake to kill. Or even just hit, for that matter. Let's just do it. Okay, so it just got to gold rank, so it evolved. And I guess the rest of the XP, I don't want to give it any more XP, because any more is wasted. So, at least in this battle. Maybe I could charm that priest. If nothing else, I get XP for trying. Actually, you know what? I don't really want it. We'll just panic it. Okay, that was interesting. I got it, though. This episode could be all about me just leveling up the snake. Uh, I'm just probably sell all that. The fireworks are actually all right. Um. You know, I might actually... I'm going to take this because I want to test something with those fireworks. The ice pick is useless to me. I'm getting rid of that. But the fireworks might actually give me some interesting opportunities. Possibly. I don't know if it com how well it combines with the sorcerer's inflict stun, but I know it does have some sort of radius around it. Um, and if the inflict stun effect works in that radius, it might be worth using in certain situations. Okay, so now that that guy's leveled up... Can go after this next. Hopefully get him some XP and then uh, maybe, if I'm lucky, get out of this little area with a King Shock Serpent. Okay, so I'm going to actually do something else besides training a snake. Um, these guys are going to just follow for now because there's no reason for them not to. Just in case a group of Draconian units jumps me out of nowhere, that guy I'm just going to have sit in here because I don't really want to mess with moving him around at the moment. And let's see, I had a big group going out this way. I think... I think I killed uh, some wandering units here earlier. I don't quite remember why I had the... Oh no, I brought these guys up to help deal with some other units before they caused trouble. So... Yeah, they're dead. Um, I could probably move... I'm probably going to move this group, or just leave this group kind of like here-ish on defense, guarding this area, so if anything sneaks through, they should run into it. Uh, yeah, this is probably a good spot. Um, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with them yet. I may have them go this way, but we'll see what the druid finds. Okay, this guy can go one more, and then I want to build a tower here. Uh, this backup is almost down here. Grab the haste berries, get a little bonus movement there. And I uh, might be able to clear those units out of that structure finally, get a little extra happiness for that city. I think I'm going to take the knight down that way. Yeah, the knight and the eagle can go down there and help with that. Right, yeah, on the next turn. I should be able to finally get rid of that. Okay. That's been a long time coming. Alright, need to be careful in what I dig. I believe those are rock walls. Yes, it is. And 
and I'm going to want to terraform those to wetlands, flood fields. There we go. Can't do the one the unit's on for whatever reason. Oh yeah, I had these other fairies back here. May have been worried about the undead jumping them. Not necessarily this guy's army, they would be fine. Okay, then you can get up. You actually will need to be in both places now that I think about it. Um, I might have that priest double back and hang out in that city until the item's done so it can get shipped off right away, if I remember to do that anyway. Okay, confirm army movement. Where were these guys going? Oh yeah, I was going to have them sit here for the time being, kind of defend the base. A lot of structures out there that need clearing. I'll wait until some of my backup gets here. And uh, that is it for this turn. Alright, I think I'm good. Oh yeah, I need to get Embrace Darkness started again. Mana's back down to 609, which is good. That means it's being used. I don't like it when it piles all the way up. Oh hey, I'm not even thinking. This is all in the domain of the city too. For some reason I looked at the river as like a barrier, but that is not the case. Okay. You know, I'm half thinking that this might have been a mistake. Because this city, if I were to convert it right now to Goblin, this city would get Swarm darties, Darters right away. And it's already pretty much upgraded. And I could really use them against the elves. On the on the uh, flip side of that is I don't really think there's any draconian units that would necessarily be that useful. Hmm. I may have just wasted a bunch of mana doing that. I'm absorbing the population. Uh, what's my other options here? You know, I think I'm going to migrate that to goblins. I don't have a reason. I don't have any draconian units that I necessarily want, but that vault of knowledge makes me really want goblins. I'm going to cancel this. And I could actually migrate it to goblins in one turn. So, oh yeah, because of the expander ability. Okay, so I'm going to migrate to goblins. And I'm going to, okay, for before I forget, I'm going to cast Embrace Darkness out here. Unfortunately, this Griffin Rider doesn't benefit from all, but all those who come after it will. Oh, he surrendered to me. Well, no. Nope, that'd make the rest of this game too easy. We're gonna, he's, he's gonna fight like a man to the death. Okay, I'm uh, gonna move these guys first before turning this wall in wetlands. Actually, I could leave a path for them to use, I suppose. Let me do this now before I forget to do it. Um, the goblins are going to love this. All right. Just get a whole bunch all over the place. Actually, you know what? I'm going to pause this for a second so you guys don't have to watch me just clicking through all of this. I'll be right back. Okay, I left my, myself with uh, over 300 mana there, so hopefully be good. Um, that'll, that'll make the goblins quite a bit happier on the next turn. And then I can start making swarm darters right away. I don't know why I didn't think to do that before. All right, well, unfortunately, since I did decline his piece, I do have to go way out of my way here to go track down this city on the edge. But uh, that's, that's okay. Can I get anybody on that tile? Nope, everybody's gonna force me to go like this. That looks like another, yeah, that's a, definitely another goblin city out there. At least having that city will give me control over another cave entrance. How far away are my boats? 
they're still a long ways. They got a got a lot of exploring and sailing to do. Hey, look what we found. Pirates. Alright. Looking forward to getting a chance to use these ironclads. Now I know from uh, my buddy Jake's experience that uh, these ironclads are a little weird to use. Thanks for all bunching up together, I believe. Well, not quite, not perfectly, but they first off they need like the uh, dread dreadnoughts. They need a turn to charge up their attack, which actually that shouldn't be a problem at all. All right. And then I think it defaults to their mortar shot. I'm not sure. It defaults to... Okay, now that's even per more perfect. Yeah, see, it just defaults to their mortar shot. That threw Jake off a little bit, because he thought it defaulted to Ram uh, in one of our off-camera off games. Oh, wait. No, that's the problem. It defaults to mortar shot instead of move. That's what got him in trouble. Which honestly makes no sense. There's no other unit in the game that does this. I, I wonder if this is a bug. Do you actually have to click move every time? I, I almost messed it up there and nuked my own stuff. Alright, now I can blow them all up. Uh -huh. Um, that's getting sold. <laughs> and these battles just kind of need to be done manually because... The AI is just dumb. Probably wouldn't even bother trying to ram or anything. In this first turn, you can move them to wherever you feel like. You, you can, I mean, you can move them without needing to click on the movement. It just switches once their mortar becomes active. So long, suckers. And you know what? Because I can. Spread the XP out a little bit more instead of letting just one unit have all of it. Okay, so that should take care of my pilot pirate problems. I think at this point, the galleon is going to split off and become more of a scout to go more into the corner and make sure I didn't miss anything over here. Whereas these guys are going to go straight at the draconians. And oh, a bunch of krakens. I might need his help with those. Maybe. Are they weak to fire or have any resistance? No, they're neutral towards fire. Okay. Oh yeah, I got him that Doom Gaze wand that gives him the extra damage on his range attacks. That's pretty good. That, that could be pretty cool. And he's getting razor projectiles from that. Um, I'm going to clear up some space in his inventory here. I could give him Lucky. That actually might be kind of an interesting idea. Actually, that's... That's why I had that combination there. I wonder if that combination would be useful for anyone else. Anyone who has high morale, preferably not my king. He actually is probably the best candidate for that. But I really want that poison resistance on him. 
high is his morale? You know what? We'll give this a try. Because max morale plus lucky might be worth it. And I'm really only losing one resistance. Yeah, I think that's probably a good trade-off. Uh, let's get some free stuff for a nearby city. Actually, should I go and get that tomb first? Or go up this way and go straight after the city? You know, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to clear as I go. Um, enough goblin butchers to make me want to do this manually. I shouldn't need to use, um, shouldn't need to use summon beast horde for a battle like this, but definitely don't want to be stupid and get something killed either. Yeah, plus weakened on top of everything else. There's some chances I would just as soon not take. Okay, this is going to tear apart pretty much whatever he shoots with it. everywhere. Hopefully that'll be sufficient. All right, he's got regrowth as well. Uh, this Griffin Rider needs to level up badly. Okay, that works. I'm gonna let it get the kill too, if that web works. Alright. Alright, can you heal anyone? Heal the knight. Uh, nobody else has any Passive effects. Oh, he's bleeding out. He's got one turn left. Alright. Yeah, I really want him to have tireless. As soon as I can. Uh, wooden wall or shooting grounds? Welp, I guess the wooden wall. <laughs> Uh, that's where my druid army needs to kind of be headed, by the way. I sort of ran right past that tunnel entrance. I think maybe that's where I was headed until I got a little distracted by the city. It's alright, I'll get the city, but then I need to kind of remember that I, I should go back. Only a probable victory on this one. I'm going to... Well, let's review what I'm up against. A bunch of Banshees. I should be able to handle this one without Summon Beast Horde. Um, I don't see a reason to use it unless I need it. Because I'm actually going to get more XP from my units by letting them do the fighting. I think this army should be alright, even though it said probable victory. Oh, right, but they're gonna need to come. I gotta get him to come to me. Uh, I could do that with lightning pretty easily. Alright. You mad yet? Alright, here they come. Well, some people are despaired. But they're all still in content or good morale, so that's good. Alright, I want you... 
Oh, I was thinking he had three movement points there. Oops. Okay. I want that guy off of my king. Not my king, my hero. I'm gonna take a nasty hit from him if I move. You know what? I want you dead. I want you to lose some of your movement. And I want you to stand here and make sure nothing bad happens. You can take that hit, no problem. And then kill one of those banshees. Probably this one. Yeah, there's the lucky. That's a trade-off I get, though, because he doesn't have uh, kill undead or whatever, but I can get that for him. Because I think the druids can get that naturally. Right, how about you? Get ensnared in a web? Okay. I guess not. Okay, I got another level for the griffin. That's good. I need, I need to kill that guy. And he's just going to resurrect. Alright, that's enough out of you, I think. nourishing meal with him? I don't think I did. I can't even find it in here. He has nourishing meal, right? I know he has nourishing meal. Why am I not seeing that as an option? Oh, it's right there, and I have already used it. Okay. That's alright. You, go out there and cause trouble. He can't move now. <laughs> Staff of Divine Vengeance? Ooh. Ooh, I, I like that. I'll take that reward. Okay, well then what do I get rid of for it? He's not really carrying any machines or have, have, having any machines follow him around. Did I give everyone else tools already? Yeah, I don't really need this anymore. I haven't been using Immolating Touch much. This guy is not, because he's not leading machines around anywhere. I'm going to probably sell that. Make room for that. That's a better item. And these I may switch in and out as I feel the need, but for now I'm going to roll with the lucky setup. Okay, race governance level up. I'm going to go with the high elf. Patron Economics, since I'm not using their, uh, not using their Unicorn Riders much. Okay, I got a bunch of Grand Palaces done. Most of these cities that are finishing these will probably just go on Produce Merchandise permanently. Unless there's one that I particularly think needs to be doing something else. Uh, it's producing a grand temple. Morale is low enough that I'd rather not hurry production. I'm going to let a few of these guys pile up in here so they go out as groups. 
All right, and my two new items are finished. So I'm gonna have this guy go down here, get that and send it to the sorcerer. This guy can go up here, get, oh, that's still got one turn to go, okay. Well, I'll be ready for it when it happens. Okay, so I just realized I've gone this whole episode pretty much, and I'm, I'm coming close to the end. Haven't actually done any big battles. I think I owe you guys at least one, especially at this stage in the game. So let's kill some more Tigrans. Unfortunately, their king is not here. But that's okay. We'll just smash all their stuff without him. Probable victory. I think my odds are better than that, but let's do it. Alright, I don't like Relentless Army, but it may not matter if those Mana Core Riders bunch up enough. First off, let's get all the Juggernauts together in one place. It's generally a good way to start when dealing with these situations. If I can lure the Mana Core Riders into one spot, I can just keep blowing them all to pieces at the same time. Let's give that Knight some much needed health. And does Colm have healing? Yes, he does. I need to get him, hit, get him over to the Knight as well. Oh, can emergency repair some of this stuff too. Okay, let's make sure I'm not leaving any stragglers out like I tend to do, especially with this bottom right corner of the map, it seems like. Oh, you would shoot somebody for one damage, wouldn't you? All right, I think I'm gonna start by lighting up that wall right there. The Manticore Riders can come out at me if they want. I'm probably gonna start slowing them. Probably should have done that in the first place here. All right, yep, that's what I'm gonna do. Starting with this guy. That other one there, I can stay just out of range. They are Tigrans, so I guess they will pounce anyway. But as long as, maybe I should have gotten the one that was furthest away. I don't know. We're gonna start, I'm gonna start shooting things from a slight distance. Just to get them, hopefully lure them out of the walls. And as an added bonus, kill one mystic. All right, so they'll almost surely pounce all over my juggernauts on the next turn. So I'm gonna have some units ready to deal with that, like a phalanx right here. And a warlord. Okay, you're good. Send the knight over here. I'm gonna have the firstborns hanging out by these two. I'm going to actually smash that gate to give them a little more mobility in this area. And then flame tanks will just be on standby. There's probably no need or reason for me to not rapid reload this thing. I don't know that any of those guys pounce all the way to the engineer, so I should be okay. I'm going to say that this is pretty close to good enough. We'll just move these guys over and 
Should be ready for him. Cowards, they're not coming out of their walls yet. Maybe I just need to break their walls. Okay, well, I can do that. <laughs> From a very safe distance. longer they give me to do this, the more of them I can slow down. Whoops, I can't do that though because I used my king. Alright, 14 to 22. Okay, that is completely broken. So they should come down after me now. Hopefully not after the king necessarily. Let's surround him with some stuff just to be safe. Okay, I think I'm a little better prepared for him this time around. Their walls are broken, so they should come flying out of the gates at me. Yep. Okay, so plenty of options for blowing stuff up here. I'm gonna... How much damage does a broadside do? Because I almost feel like in this situation it might be useful. Now I think I'm gonna open up with a flame flame tanks like I normally would. Because I can catch a lot of these units in the fire blast from this. Alright. Love those critical hits. Not a huge fan of the Tigrans being resistant to it though. Let's, before I do anything else, let me kind of... Alright, so this... Okay, yeah, this guy needs a good old firstborn hammer to the back. It's not going to kill it, but... It's actually very nearly going to kill me. Tireless crap, I forgot about that. Uh, let's see here. Alright, I need to try to disjunct that probably first and foremost. Okay, well, that gave me something to think about, I suppose. I could cast slow on it, so stuff at least can't retaliate. Well, actually, now I can't, because I just cast that spell. He, he got into a nasty little spot there. Alright, I'm gonna... I have to move these things. If I want to fire him at it at anyone on this turn. My king can't move. That one fortunately is already slowed. I think they must have dispelled one of their slow effects. These guys don't have fire resistance. I think I did say they had fire resistance a second ago, but that's not true. Oh, what to do. Take the hit. Oh, it doesn't matter because my king... I can only reset the cooldown on one of these anyway. Well, this did not go that well, despite all my best plans here. I'm probably going to lose a machine, but that's okay because I'll remember to reassemble this time. Let's focus primarily on these dang mana core riders. OK, 
Okay, that actually did pretty well for itself. Ram him. Might be able to take out another Manicore Rider with these things. I'm gonna flame my own Juggernaut, but it might be worth it here. Ooh, don't want to do that. Not while he's still alive. But, I also can't really go around. Wait, yeah, I can. I could move this firstborn. Alright, go here. It's not the best route, but it's better than nothing. At least kill one of those. Alright, now what's next? I have a very angry Manicore Rider to kill. Because I can't let this thing sit back here causing trouble. I kind of want to protect that dwarf firstborn if possible. Heal him if I even can. I don't think I can. So I've already used their healing. That firstborn might die, and it's going to be very unfortunate if it does. I'm just hoping they target the machines instead so that I can reassemble them. Let's get these guys in here, the phalanxes. They're a little better at suited at dealing with this guy. It's just not going to be enough to kill it, no matter how I roll this. Oh, Relentless Army is so dang good. Ooh, a 5% chance to cripple. How exciting. I'm just going to do as much damage to this thing as I can. I'm probably going to lose some stuff here. You know, if I actually had been a little bit smarter about this, I would have at least tried to web it, because that would have taken away one of its movement points for sure. Well, this is just a fine example of how not to solve your problems. Ooh, maybe I could get that to trigger. Nope, no such luck. I'm just gonna try to keep him from moving or damage him to the point where he can't do a whole lot. Okay, a critical hit for three damage. That's never a good sign. Um, how about a little life steal? I'll ram him. Just can't quite finish him off. That firstborn probably could have, but he's a little too crowded now. Well, whatever. That's all I can do. So I have to pay. I'm gonna let this move kind of slow because I need to pay attention to what they do. Going for the Warlord, I see. Alright. He's got quite a bit of defense, so... They went for that flame tank. That's fine. That's kind of what I wanted them to do. Oh, he's trying to kill the Juggernaut. Okay, cool. That This is fine. I think they could be fighting this significantly better. Alright, they're going to kill that flame tank. I can reassemble it. It's okay. All right, and their guard is all still up because Tiger and Manicore Riders are so freaking good. Um, well, I can point blank them with these things, so.
could war cry this one, but no, I couldn't. It's still got enough health. That it probably that wouldn't work. And these phalanxes are all up on top of me. That's not good either. All right, I gotta be a little creative here. It's gonna be a long episode, everybody. <sighs> okay, who do I want this guy to target? I could probably come pretty darn close to killing that Manticore Rider. Should free up the Firstborn to move and do something else. But I kind of also want it to move over here and fry some of these guys. If I can figure out a way to get... Yeah, if I can figure out a way to get them out of that little situation there. Okay, this guy is pretty darn close to dead. The Firstborn can deal with him and get a little bit of health. Okay, they didn't get any health back. Those ones don't have life stealing. Uh, I can move up here, take a couple hits on the Phalanx, and they'll be okay. Why is it? Oh, the man that mana core rider slowed. Okay, so this one can't retaliate. Which may make my decision making a little easier here. That one is not slowed. I need to get this guy out of here. Because I gotta use those mortars. Uh, is that a structure that I can break? Yes, it is. Okay, I think I'm kind of getting a little plan put together here, and it's going to start with this guy getting nuked with fire. Alright. Now that he's out of the way, I can run back here with this guy, war cry, and I can pounce. How does it feel, you jerk? Alright, now they cannot kill it. But maybe a knight with devastating charge could? It's a little tricky, I don't know. One, two... No, it won't. But I could shoot it. And maybe the firstborn could finish it off. They could at least get it to where it'll die from fire aura. Okay, they actually killed it. Alright, good. So the phalanx is over there to deal with that guy. And now this guy is free to move as he sees fit. Now, I'm going to need probably the fairies to break this structure. May need the king to get nah, not against not against phalanxes. That moves him back. He takes some nasty hits, but that's all I needed was to get him out of the way. Then I can rapid reload with my king. This guy's already got a mortar shot ready, and that one does too. So I can actually do quite a bit of damage to these other phalanxes here. But I don't want to forget that I've still got this Manticore Rider problem up here that I would like to deal with. And I don't know if... I think everybody up here has moved. So that's kind of a problem. I could probably blow it up this way. It actually wouldn't do a whole lot of damage to my flame tank. But no, I think I need these guys over here. If anything, I would just reassemble a machine, whatever one he decides to kill. Alright, we're going to leave him alone for now and focus on the pikemen, or the phalanxes. Oh good, this flame tank's got a... I can torch some stuff with this too.
right? Probably put another mortar right there. Maybe I'll target him with this one first and see what happens. These phalanxes are just really tough. I can move around this one without being hit because it's slowed. If the knight has enough movement. One, two, three, four, five. It could go one, two, three. It's not going to make it anywhere near that other mammoth or mammoth manacor rider. Okay, I gotta keep this one moving here. Um, because I still need this to be able to render while I'm getting ready for work in the morning. Let's uh, let's just do something. Okay, that takes care of that little problem. I wonder if I could blunderbuss that thing to death. Yeah. Hit my own stuff a little bit, but I'll take that trade-off. Take that any day. Alright, then I can set you both on fire. And I think this is the only flame tank that's left. Um, I don't really want to nuke my own phalanx, so I'll probably just ram this guy. He's gonna kill something anyway. Alright. Oh, he's got sprint, right. Ah, they're going to break two machines. And killed the fairies. Dang it. Alright. Seems like every time I fight a battle against these Tigrans, they get a little bit harder. Alright, well I want to get the Juggernaut back. The fairies, I guess I can live without. Where is reassemble? There it is. Um, somewhere on this battlefield there is a broken juggernaut. Is it sitting? I think it's sitting right there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's where it is. Alright, you are a little pest. I need to die. You are also a pest. Need to create a way for him to get through here. Oh. Well, you know what I just did. Alright. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a hit. I'm going to slow them so they move. But they can't move too far. Then I'll pick my unit back up. In fact, I should be able to get that and the tank back up doing this. My gosh, the whole army is just beat up. Get everybody as far away from him as I can. Just on the off chance that uh, that enchanted threads triggers and traps somebody. Alright, he can't move much. We'll let him do his thing. All right, you get out of there. Now, you need to pick up a Juggernaut. First, actually pick up, pick up the flame tank, which broke there, I think, because it's further away. It's around here somewhere. I know a flame tank explodes. Oh, the flame tanks explode. You can't get them back. Okay. Well, that's all right. I mean, it's not ideal, but I can work with that. Uh, let's see here.
You know, this is probably about as good as once once those Tigrans charge. I mean, it's that pounce, really. It, it's just so dang good. But I don't know if there's a whole lot else I could have done here. And here I am looking for my other Juggernaut. Uh, who can hit that guy? You can hit him with fire. These absurdly tough units. Okay, I think this. Sh nope, that won't quite do it. This will do it. Wait a sec, that was the other Juggernaut. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. The flame tank's the one that blew up. Okay, jeez. If I'd have known that was going to take that long, I would have probably waited until the next episode for it. But that's, a way. Uh, that's okay, we made progress. Uh, that's what's important. So let me uh, bundle these guys back up into some sort of a formation. Did he have... He must have had... You have, uh, what's that spell called that auto destroys a city if it's captured? I don't actually remember what that's called. He must have had that cast on his capital, which is kind of odd. It's not something I'd normally see the computers casting on their own capital cities. Okay, so how many units did I lose? Every army lost somebody. So we'll bring in some reinforcements for him. How about a new flame tank, a new firstborn? And a new cannon. To keep that siege theme going. Okay, so they are on their way, and I really need to uh, stop recording this one or else I'm not going to have... I don't really render these in the mornings while I'm getting ready for work. Um, I might have to get up a little extra early tomorrow morning to get this all done before I leave. Uh, but I think, I think I'm good here. So, I mean, I lost a few units, but I killed an awful lot more than I lost. Now here's the problem. I'm about to go up against Lord of the Deep in the next battle. I didn't want them to get a bunch of those, but it's a little too late. They've had control of that structure for too long. All right, well that's okay. Uh, we're gonna we'll, we'll deal with it uh, in the next episode. I will figure something out, hopefully without losing too many units in the process. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I appreciate it, and I will see you in the next episode.